So how did your trading day go? Was it more tricky or did you find some treats? I'm John Zadar. This is Halloween, the last day of October and the first day of the week, Monday. And you're watching On Top and Hot. Now thank God there's penny stocks out there because the OTC market was more tricky today than treaty, at least in my opinion. But penny stocks, they're on every market. Any stock under five bucks is a penny stock. So on days like today, I like to meander on over to the major exchanges and see what's playing up over there. It's a great arena to play in, folks. There's no transaction fees. There's lots of traders over there with lots of money. So you can always run over there when the OTC isn't cooperating. But there's normally something popping somewhere on the OTC markets. I do a lot of research on the OTC. Matter of fact, all that news right there I've read. That's news over the last week, I guess. You got your oldest news up at the top and your newest news down here at the bottom. And that's really good news, folks. It's stuff I've picked out to share with you. Uh, mergers, acquisitions, new distribution deals, new technology, you know, all the juicy stuff. So take your time, read that. I'm sure you'll find something in there that appeals to you. Now, I said I do a lot of research on OTC stocks. I do. And thank God for this site. It saves me so much time and hassle. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it saves me a lot of time because most of the time when I find something, it's right. This is the OTCMarkets.com website. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that vital, important information we're constantly looking for. So don't be running over to Google doing searches for everything. Start here. If you can't find it here, then go run over to Google. I promise you, you'll save a lot of time. You'll get more research done. All right, let's see how our OTC market finished today. It's not looking good. I'm going to refresh this over here and pray for a bump. Ah, little itty bitty one. Nothing to get excited about. Dollar volume, we're still under the 2.1. We're still under 2 billion. We are at 1.8. It's staying down and it is not really going anywhere. Share volume, is staying down and really not going anywhere. We're at 5.4 billion. Folks, we're dying to get up to 10 billion. The market does so much better. I'm not saying it's in great condition, but it does so much better. Why wouldn't it? it it's virtually twice as much as we're doing right now. And yes, the trades is stuck right there between 250 and 300,000 shares where we have been for I've lost tabs. So the market is not doing very well. As I said, lots of tricks today, not a lot of treats, but I do have some to share with you as well as one off the NASDAQ. Let's see what I got today. We're going to take a look at an OTC penny stock first, a real popular one today. This is Wheelin Technologies, ticker WLAN. They didn't have any new news or fresh filings come out today, so there was no new catalyst for all the activity she had. However, there was a press release that came out on the 27th, and ever since then, every day, the price has been rising, including today. Now, in that news press, they had two relevant pieces of information, and though the company didn't elaborate on it, I can see more of a collaboration going on between the two than they're mentioning, and I'll share what I'm thinking when we get there. So WLAN finished today at 0 .00555, just a smidge over a half a penny and just over 18% gains, though I did see her hit 50% for her high today. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got both the verified profile and the transfer agent verified as well. Now these are always good to see, but they're really important if you're going to be in a company for a long hold or a long swing. Fact of the matter is, these represent a lot of information that's being validated behind the scenes. So if you're going to be in a company for a while, make sure you see these. If you're day trading the stock, forget about it. You're in and out so quick, nothing really matters. Now, this is a bit strange to me. They say that the company is a shell risk, which is a bad thing. Anytime you see the word risk, it isn't good, right? Well, what that infers is that they're in business, but they're not reporting any revenues. They're not making any money. And that's not the case. Every year they've been making money every quarter. It's not a lot, but they're making money and even a profit. So why that says shell risk, I really don't know. So what does WLAN do? Well, they tell us in their business description here that Whelan designs, builds, installs, and operates industrial grade wireless access points for both indoor and outdoor use for many types of communications, including Wi-Fi, streaming, video surveillance, 
PA systems, voice over the internet, and internet of things connectivity. These wireless solutions have been deployed successfully already in convention centers, auditoriums, stadiums, and large offices, warehouses, public parks, and marinas. So they're doing a lot, and they're doing it in a lot of places. So what's the relative volume around the company day, considering she didn't have a fresh catalyst? Pretty impressive, by golly. Almost nine times her volume jumped from 7.2 million up to 63 million without any fresh catalyst. Only that news press from the 27th. Share structure. Well, as you probably know, I always go to the unrestricted shares. I just presume unrestricted shares, the shares on the market, are going to be real close to the float. In this case, I would have been wrong. This is actually the right number right there and right there. They're in agreement, so I'm outvoted. $603 million in the float. Looking at the financials now. As you can see, over the last four years, they have been making money and keeping some of that money. And the last few quarters, same exact thing. So why it says they're a shell risk, I don't know. Looking at their disclosures, now you probably saw June was the last quarter that they had there. They just filed the September quarterly report. So everything is caught up and here is some fresh information here if you want to dive into it. And we've got no other SEC filings here. So let's go check out our news. So the last piece of news is what we're looking at here came out the 27th. Special advisor appointed and exclusive patented streetlight internet transmission device acquired. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Now, as I said, there's two pieces of information in there. You heard the and. So we're going to look at the first one here and then the second one. The company has engaged Tony R. McDowell as a special advisor. Mr. McDowell previously served as a senior director network engineering and operations for T-Mobile USA, covering South Florida and the Caribbean. He comes with a wealth of telecom technical and operational expertise and relationships to support the company's future wide Wi-Fi and cellular development and expansion plans. Now the second part, the company has also acquired the exclusive license to build and sell a patented street light fixture that can host micro wireless devices to significantly improve internet reception and connectivity from the reach of each street light pole. This product has been deployed already in Miami-Dade County. Folks, that's South Florida where Mr. McDowell has been working. Think it's a coincidence? As well as in several sites in Mexico, and they're all operating efficiently. The light fixture has the technology to host a variety of LTE devices and is also ready for the next generation of newer technologies, including 5G devices, as well as hosting Wi-Fi devices and video surveillance equipment. The light fixture is manufactured right here in the United States in Southern Florida. The company is developing plans to roll out these devices in greater numbers to a variety of city locations, both in the U.S. and overseas, and these results are expected to be reflected during fiscal 2023 and increasingly thereafter. So they've got a new person on their team. I'm not going to say he's part of the management. He's an advisor. He's not a CEO or CFO or anything like that, but he's an advisor. He comes from T-Mobile. He has a lot of relationships and he's been working in South Florida and the Caribbean. And the first contract we get here is in Miami, Dade County, South Florida. So I think they've got a man here who's going to really help this company to grow. And now they've got this very innovative product. Now, it's not the first time I've seen it, but it's the first time I'm seeing some activity go on with light poles that are working with the internet, working with all sorts of connectivity issues. So this is a hot product, and if they can get it out there moving fast, this company could blast off. It's in the right era for that sort of technology, isn't it? Boy, couldn't we use something that convenient? Let's go take a look at that chart and see how she's been rising, and is she going to rise some more? Yowza! Now that's what I call a chart. This is WLAN six month, four hour chart on Think or Swim. If you like the platform, just go on over to TD Ameritrade and sign up for the free trading account. They'll give you one for free to use anytime you like. Just keep your account open and you can keep using it. 
So WLAN, six month, four hour chart. We got a low bubble way back here of 0012 and a high bubble today of 006. She was under the 200 for a long time. And when she decided to finally get on top of the 200, she did it with some enthusiasm. She jumped from 002 up here to just under 006, almost 300% gains. Stayed up there for a while with some volatility and then fell fast and furious, crushing the 200. She came up for air once and then took a deep dive. And only these last few days has she been getting out of that funk. And she's looking good right now. Lots of volume coming in. And look at those technicals, folks. Every single one of them is pointing up. You cannot go wrong if all of your osculators are pointing up. So the four hour is looking really hot. Let's look at that 20 day one hour. Well, we got a little different picture here. She's been falling for about 17 days. The 27th is right here. She did start to crow and grow in the back part of the day, but these last two days she has been surging. All of our SMAs are looking really strong here. As you can see, the volume is strong. Technicals are way up in the air, but they do show a little bit of pullback right now, but that RSI is screaming and it is still on fire on the one hour chart. Five day, five minute. All right, so this is the 27th, 28th, and this would be the 31st, I believe that is, 31st, 28th, that's right. So this is when the news came out, folks. She took a dip from the bell, fell, and then just started to rise. And she got about 100% gains on this day. About 50% gains here, and she did hit 50% here, and then fell back, and we were at about 20%. So each day she is rising. Is she going to continue rising? Well, that you know, that's three days of rising off of that news. Now, I think a lot of it has to do with the speculation of who this Mr. McDowell is, the guy from T-Mobile, who was working in South Florida and has a lot of connections. He can probably bring all of that to this company. And I'm presuming the deal we just seen with Dade County is part of the deals he's brought with him. That's just a presumption, but I see a lot of big things with this. So I think there is gonna be a lot more contracts coming. Every city has streetlights. Every city is in the new age with new devices. We're all gonna be needing this stuff. So their business could be huge if approached right. The stock looks like it wants to continue on, but for no other reason, I would put WLAN on my watch list for news. She seems to react very well to news. So even if she starts to dip tomorrow, the next news that comes out, she's probably gonna get a good bounce. Now you don't have to hang around all day, right? She's getting bounces real quick and coming down, real quick and coming down. This was the first day. First day, you normally get a lot of growth, but after that, you get bounces. So she comes out with news, it'll be the first time you hear about it. It'll be a big bounce. You may wanna ride it out a little longer than 10 in the morning, but 10 in the morning is always a safe bet one way or the other. We're now taking a look at a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. This is ticker LLAP, Turan Orbital Corporation. Now this company had a great day. They had some big, huge news come out today, a deal with a big, huge corporation. The price had a big, huge surge and then it had a big, huge fall. So in my opinion, there is room for a big, huge recovery, but we'll see what you think after you read the news with me. So LLAP finished today at $2.62 with just about 2.5% gains. What is this company all about? Well, Turan Orbital is a leading manufacturer of satellite products, primarily serving the United States and allied aerospace and defense industries. Terran Orbital provides end-to-end -end satellite solutions by combining satellite design, production, launch planning, mission operations, and on-orbit support to meet the needs of the most demanding military, civil, and commercial customers. Ooh la la, what do you think about that? So what was the relative volume around this company today? Pretty big, over 20 times. She's normally doing 824,000. Today she did over 20 million. Share structure for this company. Well, I knew they weren't gonna list the float over here because it's a major exchange stock, but most of the time you can't even find the floats in these major exchange stocks. But I got lucky, turns out this is 82 million. Not a super low float, but not real big either. 82 is not a bad float whatsoever. Financials, well, you know a satellite company is gonna be making money. Where's the money? Good gracious, you would... Okay, so they are making money. 
No, I take that back. They're losing money. They're generating revenues, taking those three zeros here and throwing them behind the numbers. That's 13 million that they generated the first quarter of this year and 21 million the second quarter. So they are generating more and more money. The problem is the more they generate, the more they lose. Lost almost 3 million the first quarter and almost 4 million the second quarter. So whatever formula they're using, they're gonna need to tweak that. Houston, we got a problem. Disclosures. Well, the company had a lot of filings today. These two fours, these are form fours. The insiders, whether that be management or private investors, have to file these whenever they buy or sell shares of stock. And there was a lot of sales today. And maybe that had something to do with the big drop in the price. And then we have an 8K, and that goes directly to the news today. Now, I would jump over to this news button, but half the time I'm going there, it's blank. There's nothing there. But you know me, I get the page as soon as I see it and I save it. So I do have it right over here. This news came out today. Terran Orbital Corporation announced today that it has entered into a note and warrant purchase agreement pursuant to which Terran Orbital received $100 million from Lockheed Martin. LMT, that is a huge aerospace industry corporation. They say in connection with this investment, Turan Orbital and Lockheed Martin also entered into a new strategic corporation agreement, an SCA. The new SCA runs through 2035 and allows Turan Orbital to pursue a wider variety of opportunities with Lockheed Martin. Holy cow, a lock-in for 23 years for any business that Lockheed sees that they would need from this company. Well, that's a big deal, folks. First, they get a $100 million investment from Lockheed, and then they get this contract good for 23 years, and the stock falls. This insider sells a bunch of shares. What's going on? This is an oxymoron if ever I've heard of one. So let's go take a look at this stock, folks. It had a great day today. Well, it had a great day, but it didn't finish great. <laughs> This is LLAP six month, four hour chart. About five months ago, we had a high of $14.39. She's been falling all of this time to a low at the beginning of October of $1.69. She has punched through the 200 a few times on her way down, but doesn't get any further than that. And right now she's making another attempt at punching that 200 and she is falling back right now. Lots of volume today though, compared to all the other days. And the technicals are looking like they've just had enough. They just don't want to give a whole lot more. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. Well, we've actually got a trend going here. I mean, you can see she is definitely going uphill. There's no doubt about that. She's had some rolls through there, but she is climbing across the 200. Now, this is an attempt. She's tried this before and she comes back down. She had a big jump today, all pre-market, it looks like, and a huge fall all day. And it looks like it's still falling after market hours. And all the technicals are just as tired on the one hour as they were the four hour. Five day, five minute. Not a whole lot going on for the previous four or five days. She's just been hanging around the 200. And then we had a big jump all pre-market. She hit a high of $3.88, started to fall pre-market and fell the whole day and even after market. And it looks like she's coming right down to our trend line. She may bounce off of that folks right there. I wouldn't think she'd go any further, but I really don't know. What I do know is that Lockheed Martin is a huge corporation, probably doing billions of dollars of business. This company just got a hundred million dollar investment from them. And they've got a lock in for 23 years for new opportunities that may crop up in the future. That is all good news to me. I don't see why it is falling. Now I know an insider just sold a bunch, but these can't be all his. So a lot of other people may have just been following suit. I think it's ready to give some money back. This deal is worth something, and we are right back to where we started at before the news came out. I would keep my eye on LLAP immediately and watch for that volume, watch for that jump, and get in on it, folks. I don't know what this is worth, but it's worth more than that. 
we're now going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ, covering all my bases. This was a real popular stock today, ticker SONN, Sonnet Biotherapeutics. They too had some big news about a deal with a big company that we've all heard of, and the charts were screaming today, well over 100%. She finished today at $1.93, and she kept 66.5% of her gains. Now, they tell us down here that they're a burger joint. They've got all sorts of restaurants that sell fast food. Eh, not true. They need to update this. Even the ticker's wrong. No, Sonnet Biotherapeutics is a biotech. They create drugs. They are research and development. They put them through phase trials, and then they try to get these drugs on the market. Don't get the two businesses confused. That could be a real mess, even trouble. So what was the relative volume around this company's big news today? Whoa! Whoa, just under 300 times her normal volume, jumping from 381,000 shares to over 100 million. Very impressive. Ah, yes, this too is very impressive. We have an outstanding share count of 60 million, and would you believe that the float is 4.5 million? It is a super duper low float, folks. They just did a reverse split, as you'll see in the news. A one to 14 reverse split a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and now the float is down at 4.5 million. An excellent float, folks. What is this company doing financially? All right, at the end of uh, their fiscal year, which was September of 2021, they had almost a half a million dollars and they got to keep all of it. Didn't cost them a red cent for any of that money. And quarterly, well, the first quarter they did 95,000, second quarter 62,000, and they're getting to keep all that money. It isn't costing them anything. I got to figure it's consultancies because you don't create drugs and make money and not have to spend it to do it. So I don't know where that money's coming from, but at least they got something coming in. It helps to pay the bills. Looking at their disclosures, we do have an 8K that came out today and that's actually where we are going to start. Now 8Ks are real short folks. If you're not looking into your filings because you think they're too deep, 8Ks are one of the shortest ones you'll get. This is a long one, actually, and that's as big as it is right there. That's the whole thing. Normally, they're right there. That's all you get. Just underneath this big dark line, you'll see the information that needs to be read. And what we've got here on October 31st, 2022, that's today, folks, the company announced a collaboration agreement with Janssen Biotech, one of the Janssen pharmaceutical companies of Johnson & Johnson where in vitro and in vivo efficacy of these drugs here will be evaluated in combination with certain Janssen proprietary cell therapy assets. The agreement was facilitated by Johnson & Johnson Innovation. Sonnet shall supply the three referenced compounds for use in head-to-head -head studies. If successful and subject to provisions of the agreement, Sonnet could seek an expanded collaboration. So you've got two companies working together here. One of them is really, really big. And I don't know the potential that's going on here, folks, but when you get two companies working together to try to get drugs on the market, and that's what a head-to-head -head is. That's not a phase trial. That is a comparison. Which is better, this or that? Try this, now try that. Which one works better for you? And that's what they're doing right now. So this has a lot of potential. Now let's take a look at the news so you can see a little bit of history of what's going on here. Matter of fact, I've got this all highlighted. There's your reverse split. That came out on September 16th, a one for 14. And then here on the 21st, uh, about a week later, Sonic Bio falls for second day post reverse stock split, announces progress in two trials. Then here on the 4th of October, Sonic Biotherapeutics regains compliance with NASDAQ's minimum bid price requirement. That's big news, folks. They were under a dollar. You can't stay under a dollar for too long. If you do, they'll yank you off the NASDAQ and throw you onto the OTC. So they saved their butts. They got that price. What is it now? $1.93. So everything is looking good there. And then today's news, Sonic stock soars 16% on collaboration with Jane j for three drug compounds went more than 16 percent and just a little bit of insight into this news because this is the only news we got they did not put out a news press here sonic biotherapeutics is collaborating with johnson and johnson's 
on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker JNJ, to evaluate these drugs in combination with certain cell therapy assets of J&J's unit, Janssen Biotech. A successful evaluation could lead to a potential license agreement. Sonnet noted that it will supply the three reference compounds for use in head-to-head -head studies, and if successful and subject to terms of the agreement, the company could seek expanded collaboration. Well, I like that part there, a license agreement. That's always money in the bank. So there's your news, folks. That's what's going on. This company is working with Johnson & Johnson, and you know who they are, and you know what they can do. So the potential here could be real big. And I know the charts were respecting that fact today. Let's go take a look. But of course, we are looking at a six month, four hour chart for SONN. We got a high bubble back here just over five months ago of $9.52 and a low just a few days ago of $1.10. She had a huge run here from $3.80 up to $9.52, over 250% gains. And I don't know what that was about. She's been falling ever since then, but she has had some money grabbing days in there on her way down. She's been down here though for quite quite a while and now again she is trying to get up over that 200 without a whole lot of success she tapped it she got through it but she has fallen back after hours got a lot of volume coming into the picture right now and all of our technicals are very strong in the four hour though we have had a pullback but it's hard to see but she's right underneath it going straight right there so everything still actually looks strong on the four hour chart looking at our 20 day one hour chart only one day looks strong here. 19 days of falling under the 200, and then today all that volume came in, she shot up. And she shot from $1.12 up to 270. Over 100% gains, absolutely. And then she has lost some and still holding on to 66%. All the technicals show she's still hot, but she is cooling off right now, as you would expect with that drop right there. Five day, five minute view. Well, she's actually doing pretty well. She had a nice run here, folks. She started pre-market, was pushing up, bell went off, she continued pushing up, and she hit her high of $2.70. And if I grab my Fibonacci here, we're gonna put that at the bottom of the surge where it starts and the top where it ends. And this 50% line right there is what I'm looking for. I wanna see the price stay at or above that line right there. And look at that, folks. She went up, came down, hit that 50% mark, bounced off of it, and is now trying to fight the 50-day SMA, which is going the wrong direction. She's going to have to go against the current here to push. So we had a nice run here from about $1.15 up to $2.70. You're, you're talking over 100%, 120, 25% there. And she kept 66, so she gave away about 50%, right? She's just above that area right now. All of our technicals look like the battle's ensuing. Everything is laying on each other right now. We don't know which way it's going to go. And our RSI is smack dab in the middle where there's just not a whole lot of direction being chose. So she's going sideways right now. It is R&D. They are working with drugs. However, it's a head-to-head. -head. It's not a phase trial. It's, is this one better or is that one better? And they're working with Johnson & Johnson. The only thing that's missing was the mention of money. They didn't mention any kind of money anywhere, and that always stimulates some price movement. So being an R&D, I don't know if she's got anything more to give. These normally don't run more than a day unless they hit a home run with some cancer drug or something. But I'd keep my eye on her. You can never tell what's left over. This was a lot of volume today, and it was here all day long. So keep your eye on SONN. She was hot today. She could be hot tomorrow. So even on slow days, you've got stocks that are popping. We had two of them today that were dealing with huge corporations, Johnson & Johnson and Lockheed Martin. Come on, folks. Those are huge companies. Anybody's doing business with them, you know they're going to start making money. And W Land, well, they've got a new guy in there that's hooking them up with deals. At least that's my opinion. And if it's not just that, it is that new lamp pole that they've got that you can hook your devices up to and extend Wi Fi all through the city from pole to pole, which is an excellent product. There's lots of good products out there. There's lots of big companies. There's lots of news. And DD is going to uncover most of this for you folks. Don't be afraid of it. It is a treasure hunt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.